Our next rock star at this inaugural Investorium is having lots of success north of the border. I don't think it'd be fair, fair to say that they are, yeah, heavy metal outfit. Zamia Metals, ASX code ZGM, is an Australian mineral exploration company targeting the Clermont district of central Queensland, a known gold and emerging porphyry mineral province. Zamia holds a large packet of tenements with further tenement applications now on offer. Over 15 targets for molybdenum, gold and copper have been identified by geochemical and geophysical surveys. The Anthony deposit you're going to hear a lot about in a second is Zamia's flagship project. It's a large porphyry-style molybdenum deposit discovered by the company in 2008, hence the heavy metal. Um, please give a big round of applause. Our next lead vocalist tonight, Graham Deegan, the general manager of Zamia Metals Limited. Before I start, I'd also um, like to congratulate ABN Newswire on what I hope is going to be a regular event on the Sydney mining and investment calendar. I think it's a, a brilliant venue, great food, very cute technology, and I'm really pleased to be uh, one of the inaugural speakers. Um, now, as my uh, title suggests, as a general manager, I generally manage, so I actually brought two colleagues who are specialists along, uh, Colin Seaborn and Penny Davin, a metallurgist and a geologist to help me out when uh, there are uh, curly technical questions at the end. Um, for those of you who don't know but could be interested, the title Zamia actually comes from the na name of a, uh, a little plant that grows up in the area. It's, um, it's a, a very hardy plant, it's tough to kill, doesn't need much water, and somebody thought that characterised our company. Um, so what I'm going to do is really give a, an overview of uh, Zamia and the Anthony project. I've got to emphasise that we are at um, pre-scoping stage. Uh, we've got no hard numbers at all and we definitely don't have any profit numbers to report. Uh, so if I can get started. Um, the history of Zamia, um, a company called International Base Metals uh, was set up uh, in about 2004 by um, Ken Maiden, one of the founding directors. In about 2005-2006 some very bright geologists bought uh, some tenements from central Queensland to international base metals. And it was on the strength of those tenements that uh, Zamia was floated in 2007. Um, international base metals is still around. And in fact, uh, Frank Bethune is the managing director of IBML. And he's got a pretty exciting copper project over in Namibia. So if anybody wanted to talk to him about it, he's uh, just sitting over there. Oh, hang on. When, when Zamia was floated, uh, we had the good fortune of being supported by a lot of the Chinese investors that were already on board with IBML. Uh, they're still on board, and when the company went through uh, some difficult times during the uh, financial crisis, they stood, stood by the company and really kept it going uh, until we got, got ourselves through that. As you can see, International Base Metals is still a, a major shareholder. Um, our market cap is around about 20 million. So our focus is on the Anthony project. Um, Anthony is all about molybdenum, and I couldn't say it before I joined Zamia. Um, it's, it's a fairly uh, little known metal. Its uh, primary use is in alloying steel. Um, it has very, uh, very good heat and tensile properties. So it goes into steel in those sort of uh, applications where you need high tensile strength, high um, heat uh, resistance, and uh, good corrosion resistance. So the sort of applications that we're seeing the product go into are things like the high-speed rail up in China, uh, <laughs> piping nu nuclear power stations. Um, it, as I say, it's not a well-known metal. Um, total, total consumption is only around about 200,000 tonnes per annum. Uh, this is a graph of um, fairly recent molybdenum price. Um, it looks reasonably steady, um, which isn't actually the fact. If, if you actually look uh, back about 10 years before, you'd see that um, up until about 2004, the metal price was going at around uh, $2, $3 a pound. Um, it's a very much a supply and demand driven uh, commodity. Uh, through, uh, through that period, there was a lot of oversupply. That started getting uh, sucked up as China uh, started expanding and, and um, using steel. 
Um, what we saw in 2004, and it was an all, almost overnight event, was that the share price went, oh, sorry, the molybdenum price went from about $5 to 40. And for the next few years, it stayed around that $35 uh, dollar a pound level until late 2008, where it crashed back down in the same sort of speed to around about uh, $10. Now, um, analysts, uh, and I think they're fairly unanimous in this, the uh, molybdenum market is going to grow consistently uh, from here till at least 2020, it's believed, and the, uh, the price of mo molly is expected to go back up to that 2006, 2007 level of around about the $30 to $40 a pound. So as, as, we, as I said, um, it, um, it, it has been at uh, traditionally low prices, um, and the consequence of being at low prices is that people didn't put a lot of money into it. Um, most molly uh, production comes out of um, copper molly mines, and so the attention was on producing copper. You have to change your mining method to focus on molly. People just didn't do it. Um, people didn't invest in new molly mines, and so what we have is a big catch-up. Um, as I said, the, the unanimous forecast is continuing growth, continuing um, escalation of the molly price, and now there are a number of mines, including ours, that, um, that people are investing in. This is where Anthony is. Um, we're sort of deep in mining country, uh, surrounded by predominantly uh, coal mines, but uh, there are a number of gold mines in the area as well. Um, you can see just there's a, a little dotted blue line. Um, that's a proposed pipeline from uh, the Connors River Dam, which is being built by Sun Water. Um, we're in discussion with that um, with Sun Water. It's being built primarily to service the coal mines that are down near uh, Alpha, uh, the, the Hancock mines. Um, fortuitously, that uh, pipeline passes about four kilometres north of our project. Uh, but as you can see, we're surrounded uh, by uh, good infrastructure. The coast is only about a three-hour drive away, good port facilities. So Queensland is a, is a uh, mining-friendly environment, um, good, good infrastructure, uh, good power, uh, availability of water, uh, tenement management system, and uh, Queensland welcomes mining, more or less. This is, a, uh, this is a, a shot of our project. You can see it's, um, it's a very benign sort of area. Um, surrounding that yellow dotted area, which is the main Anthony project, is all black soil country. Uh, we have a sealed road pa passing actually through the project. So even through the rain, through the wet season, we can get our rigs to site. Uh, we're pretty well confined to that hill. Um, but uh, as, uh, because we get bogged when we go into the black soil, but there's enough activity um, on the hill to keep us busy. The, um, the highway basically separates uh, our two landowners. We've got freehold uh, uh, property over in the east and uh, a large leasehold uh, grazing station on, on the west. Um, we have very good landowner relations. Um, Queensland government late last year in introduced new legislation requiring us to formalise our conduct and compensation agreements. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was up in Claremont uh, with those two major landowners. We negotiated the deal and had a barbecue afterwards. Um, so what we plan to do, and this is part of our agreement, is actually fence off the project area so we can basically do all the drilling we want without interfering with the, um, the, the grazing uh, management of, of having to move their cattle. Uh, we also get access to a little dam that's just to the south, which provides all the water we need for our diamond drilling activities. And you can see the old Bellyander gold mine is only about four kilometres uh, northeast. Uh, that actually sits within our EPM. So, um, as I said, I'm um, not a geologist, but um, in a very basic way, this is sort of how the thing came about. Obviously, you, you had an intrusion, a porphyry intrusion, um, and through all of that, um, the stockwork vein arrangement was, uh, was formed. Quartz and molly got pushed into those veins, and over time, the volcano got weathered away, and so we're left with 
Um, basically an oxide zone of about 60 metres, transition zone of another 20, and then we're down into um, uh, a sulphide zone, which is our primary molybdenite. Now, the way, um, the way this was found is that um, some time ago, uh, CRA was um, sticking holes in, um, in those the white areas, and, um, and our guys actually looked at the two most eastern drill holes and actually found molly, molly in it. So I'm not sure whether um, uh, CRA missed that or ignored it. Um, it it's possible that just uh, molly wasn't of interest back when they were drilling those holes. So with that as the lead, uh, we started taking soil samples and uh, we found molly. If you remember from the previous slide, that hill had actually been used by the Department of Main Roads when they were building the, uh, the Gregory Development uh, Highway. <clears throat> and so they'd, they'd actually removed uh, all the trees, which of course then removed all the soil. And so the molly was actually sticking out of the ground. Um, here's a couple of examples of core. Um, you can see especially in the, uh, the top core, the, that stockwork vein arrangement. Um, it, and later I'll uh, explain why, that, why that's a good thing. We, um, we've been fairly busy. As I said, we came out of the financial crisis um, with support of our, um, our Chinese shareholders and were able to fund a, um, a round of drilling which now has us up to about 96 holes uh, most of them are sea, shallow RC down to between 200 and 250 metres. We're now going back into many of those holes and drilling diamond tails to see what's, um, what's underneath. Um, that, uh, that donut is pretty well, we believe, the lateral extent of the deposit. Uh, with further drilling, um, that hole in the middle, which is pretty barren, seems to be closing a bit, but more or less that's going to be it. Um, the diamond tails now are looking at um, how far down that goes. Now here's a couple of drill sections which um, really just show you that we've been busy. Um, the, the resource that we're, um, we're quoting now is actually sitting within pit shells, um, which is a recommendation from Hellman and Schofield as a, as a conservative approach. So what we're doing is not actually reporting the stuff that's sitting down below what would be normally an economic open pit. So we're constraining it and uh, our pit shells go down to around about 350 metres uh, below the surface. Now that, that uh, section is north of the donut, closely north of the donut and, or donut hole I should say, and this one, uh, it, last one was below. Uh, a few weeks ago, we reported um, our last resource estimate. Um, we're working on a cutoff grade at this stage of uh, 400 parts per million. Uh, naturally, we can go down to 200 if, if the price is, um, is where we think it will be at the time we start production. But even at uh, 400 parts per million, and looking just at the sulphide zone, which is the easiest uh, material, the easiest ore to, to process, we're still looking at around about 103 million pounds. Currently, the um, molly price is around about $17 a pound. So you can, you can work out what the, the value of the uh, contained metal is. Um, I'll explain later, but we're also working on getting the molly out of the oxide. Um, if we can do both, and we believe we can, then we're up to 130 million pounds of contained metal, a 30% increase. Um, now, what we've done, and I think, I think it's um, in, in pretty quick time, from April when last year, when we reported our first uh, resource estimate up until a few weeks ago, we've, uh, again, looking at 400 parts per million, per million we've doubled our resource. Um, and we haven't stopped. We've got a... Um, a rig that's uh, madly drilling away up there at the moment. What we want to do, um, obviously when we start um, producing and start processing, we want to try and get as high, capital, uh, high a return on capital as we can. And so the plan is to uh, actually upgrade from that 400 parts per million by a very cheap um, 
crushing and gravity separation process to give us a feedstock into the flotation circuit of just under 1,000 parts per million. And we'll put the, the reject, if you like, the, the stuff that's down around the 200 parts per million on a, on a low-grade stockpile that we can come back to when the price is higher. Um, we've run um, lots of samples through um, uh, metallurgical testing. At this stage, we're extremely confident of getting a, um, a concentrate of plus 50% with about a 90% recovery, which by world standards is, is extremely high. Um, the other thing, as I, I think I mentioned, in, in our um, deposit, uh, we are molly only, um, which is good unless you have lots of something else. So if you have lots of copper, it's good. If you have little bits of copper or other, other commodities, it becomes a pain because you've got to build that into your process cycle. So at this stage, all we have to worry about is getting the molly out. We get a, we will believe, we believe, get a, um, a credit from rhenium that's in there as well. So it's, it's very simple. We um, will crush it down to about um, 10 millimetres uh, to pre-concentrate, uh, then grind it and then uh, put it through the flotation to get a concentrate of about um, plus 50%. Um, as I mentioned, the, this oxide sticks out of the ground. Um, well, it doesn't stick, it comes up to the surface. Um, th so we basically, as we start uh, digging, we, we are, we're not digging overburden, which is nice. We're actually into material that we should be making money from uh, from day one. Uh, it's a different process, and again, we do, we're doing metallurgical testing on that, but the uh, results to date are extremely favourable. And we'll think, we think we'll get the same sort of recovery that we'll get out of the sulphide. So what we're doing at the moment, um, we're still um, interpreting the geology. It's, it's, not, it's not that simple, but we believe we're getting a handle on it. Um, we're extending to depth uh, by uh, deep diamond drilling. We're exploring around the Anthony deposit, plus looking at a, a number of other regional targets. We're doing metallurgical testing, which is looking at the sulphide and the, the oxide. And we've uh, recently had some environmental consultants on site to start developing our baseline work. And we will be kicking off a scoping study very soon. This is the likely development schedule. So um, we're being fairly conservative, hopefully, um, those purple bits will uh, push to the left. But at this stage, we're, we're looking at uh, completing exploration through 2011 before starting uh, scoping, which will then lead us through the DFS, um, project financing, construction and production. Um, AeroMag gave us um, this, um, and you can see in the middle uh, is the area that CRA was hoping to find copper. Um, there was nothing to indicate that Anthony was there. And um, so what we're hoping is that uh, another Anthony could be anywhere around that middle uh, uh, anomaly. Hmm. All right, we'll skip that one. Um, Zamia has around about 1,300 square kilometres of tenements in the area. Um, these are a mixture of copper, gold, and also molly um, um, zones. And we will be doing some regional work on that um, uh, starting next month. We've engaged a senior geologist who will be uh, kicking off that work. And we'll also be doing a, a, a RAB program around Anthony to try and get through the black soil and look at what's underneath. Uh, that doesn't really show very much. If, if, you were, um, if you were closer to it, you'd see that the tenements that we've uh, been awarded are all sitting around magnetic anomalies. In particular, there's a very exciting one off, off to the east, uh, and that's Mount McLaren. Uh, that has been previously drilled, and um, there is the definite molly and uh, gold in there. So the likely news flow, um, naturally as a junior explorer, we need to uh, keep pushing out our assay results. 
Um, we expect to get further um, resource estimates probably within the next few months and uh, as we go. We've, we're being, we're being uh, held up a little bit by the laboratories that are snowed under with all of the drilling that's happening in Queensland. Um, our scoping study is obviously very, very important to us and uh, it will really be the decider of whether the project's happening. Um, as I said earlier, the results from the oxide uh, testing will add another 30% to our uh, uh, contained metal. So again, a very important um, uh, result to, um, to um, put out there. And the feasibility study, of course, will be the, um, uh, the thing that will take us into project financing. So I guess in summary, uh, why invest in Zamia? Um, I think in a nutshell, it's a no-brainer. Um, it's very, very simple mining. It's in a very benign area. Um, metallurgy to date has uh, shown that it, there's nothing complicated about it. It's molly only. Um, it's a very, very straightforward process, especially if we're looking at the sulphide. Um, we think we have um, good upside on the other tenements that are surrounding Anthony. So the plan, of course, is to get Anthony going into production as we're bringing other projects into an advanced exploration stage. Um, Molly currently is selling for around about $38,000 a tonne, uh, which means that our, um, we're, we're not constrained by infrastructure. Uh, it's easy to truck it almost anywhere in Queensland and, um, and still make a profit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Graham Deegan, General Manager of Zamia Metals Limited. We've got time for some questions. Any questions from the audience for Graham tonight? No? Not one. Oh, oh yes, we've got one up here. Okay, just up the back, ladies, on the terrace. Hello. Uh, interested you've got rhenium there. Uh, any idea what sort of type of concentration of rhenium and what type of rhenium price do you... Oh, you say, you're using it as a credit, but just wonder whether uh, oh, there's, a, there's a few dollars there to be had within the rhenium. Yeah, it, at this stage, we're, as I said, we're, we're really not putting numbers. I mean, rhenium would appear to be there, um, the view is, and these are very early um, uh, metallurgical testing. Um, we believe we'll get a credit, but we really couldn't say just you know, what that looks like. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any further questions while Graham's on stage? No? Okay. Graham? Uh, just, just one more oh, One more? Sorry. I've got lots of my eyes. Graham, the, um, I don't know if there's any example of uh, molly mines that are standalone. You mentioned how most of them are copper molly. Mm -hmm. Is there an example of a molly mine that's standalone, despite the fact it looks like you, you could have a good concentrate? It, it is rare. Um, I guess um, Ivanhoe, uh, I believe, will be pretty much um, standalone in their, um, their Merlin deposit, um, but they're, they're very rare. They, they generally don't, they don't uh, come with almost nothing in there. Uh, I think there are, there are several around that um, will, will have um, uncommercial commodities with it, but I think um, ours will be one of the only uh, mines that will, will produce molly uh, with nothing else to sell. That about it for questions? Yes? Okay. Put your hands together, please. Graham Deegan, General Manager of Zamia Metals.